Rabbits are fundamental to router joinery. If you can cut a clean, accurate rabbit, you can apply those same skills to cutting other forms of joinery, such as dados, grooves, lap joints, interlocking corner joints, even tenons. So it's worth taking the time to perfect your rabbiting skills. And that's the goal of this short tutorial. I'm assuming you already know how to cut a basic rabbit with either a router table or a handheld router. So instead of rehashing those basics, I'm going to give you some tips that will help you build upon what you already know. Now let's get started. You can cut a rabbit with a simple straight bit, but it's hard to beat a dedicated set because the interchangeable bearings make it fast, easy, and accurate to set your rabbit's width. And the width of the rabbit is the most important part of that whole setup process. Think about it. If you cut a rabbit a 32nd or a 16th too deep, your box or whatever you're making will just become a tiny bit smaller. Nobody will ever notice that small error. But if you cut your rabbit just a little bit too wide, you'll end up with an overhang that will definitely require some extra work to remove. That's why I prefer dedicated rabbit bit sets. The critical width is preset for you depending on the bearing you use. This also makes the cut repeatable. You can cut a rabbit today, put your bit away, and next week cut that exact same rabbit of precisely the same width guaranteed. There is, however, a downside to dedicated bit sets. Depending on the size of the bearings that your bit set comes with, you can easily cut rabbits of standard size widths like quarter inch, five eighths, and three quarters. You may be able to cut some odd sizes like nine sixteenths and eleven sixteenths. But if you're working with plywood, you might have a difficulty matching a bearing to the width of the rabbit that you need because today's plywood is metric. It's almost always about a 30 second undersized. So that could mean a bit of sanding to clean up the edge if you wish to fit a plywood workpiece into a rabbit cut with some bit sets. Now that doesn't need, mean that you need a different bit to cut rabbits with plywood. Just install the nearest sized bearing that you have, set it flush with your fence, and then add a strip or two of tape directly on the fence That'll make the cut slightly shallower and allow you to fine tune the rabbit's width. I'll put a link to the rabbiting bit set that I use in the notes below this video. It's got a good selection of bearings and it's pretty high quality. Just click on show more if you're watching this on YouTube. A bearing equipped rabbiting bit can be used with or without a fence, either at the router table or with a handheld router, but starting the cut can be tricky. The problem lies at the corner of the workpiece. It's easy for the bit to sort of wrap around the corner a little bit at the beginning or the end of the cut, and this will create an obvious error in the finished project. The solution is to use a fence. But wait a minute, isn't the whole point of bearing equipped router bits so you don't have to use a fence? Well, not in this case. With a bearing equipped rabbiting bit set, the point of that bearing is to make setup fast, easy, and repeatable. You still will benefit from a fence that's set flush with the bearing to give you full support at the beginning and the end of the cut. Even with a handheld router, a fence will prevent the bit from turning at the corner as you enter and exit your rabbit. If you do insist on working without a fence, you should consider placing a scrap next to the edge of your workpiece. Place your bearing on this scrap at the beginning of the cut and you'll maintain a crisp corner as the bit starts cutting into your actual workpiece. At the router table, a starter pin will help you lever your workpiece into the bit more accurately as well, and much more safely. But you still have to take care that you don't walk that bearing around the corner of your workpiece. Due to the direction in which the router bit spins, you can experience some nasty tear out when the bit emerges at the end of a cut, particularly when you're working across the grain. The best way to prevent this is to place a scrap of material along the edge of the workpiece to support those fibers. At the router table, this scrap also helps keep narrow workpieces perpendicular to the fence as you cut your rabbit on the end. Another type of tear-out common to rabbits is found along the shoulders. This is more often going to occur if the grain runs toward the edge of the workpiece so the bit's cutters can lever it up. This can be prevented with an initial skim cut, which removes just a tiny bit of material and severs the fibers along the shoulder. Because tear out becomes worse the more aggressive your cut is, taking a shallow skim cut at the beginning will help to establish that crisp corner and then you can go back and remove more material. Of course, that only takes care of one shoulder, and a rabbit is made up of two shoulders. Both are prone to tear out. 
So if you're working with some expensive material and you really want to be sure you get crisp shoulders on both sides of the rabbit, you should cut it in three steps. Begin with a very shallow skim cut along the edge, then take a second pass to remove most of the material, and then follow it up with a third final skim cut that brings your rabbit to its full width. If you've made a box or a frame, it may be easier to cut the rabbits for the frame back or the box bottom after the project's been assembled. Otherwise, you may be able to see the ends of your rabbits on the outside of the project. This is easy to do at the router table with a bearing guided router bit, but it may also be done with a handheld router and a base plate large enough to span the box like this one. We made a video some time ago about making your own router base plates like this. I'll link to it in the notes below this video. These tips should go a long way to helping you cut better rabbits. Next time we're going to build on this foundation by creating four different types of rabbits that will take your projects to the next level. This video was sponsored by Rockler Woodworking and Hardware. Rockler and I have been partners for years. They took a chance on me when I was just getting started because they knew how important the online woodworking community is to keeping this craft alive for future generations. So please thank them by visiting their website. And don't just type in rockler.com. Use the link that I'm putting in the notes below this video. If you're watching this on YouTube, just click show more. If you use that link to go there, they'll know that you're supporting us and I would greatly appreciate that. For more great tips, tricks, and tutorials designed to make you a better woodworker, check out Stumpy Nubs Woodworking Journal. You can read and subscribe for free at stumpynubs.com.